welcome to the very first video in my new Who Is series here on YouTube. In these videos, I'm gonna take you down memory lane for some of the most prominent Counter-Strike players we have to offer. The first video is gonna be about the Vice. We're gonna talk about how he started his career. I'm gonna give you some small, I guess, unknown facts about the Vice from the time back in the day when I was playing with him. We basically grew up in the same era of Counter-Strike. We both played Counter-Strike Source. We both broke through in, in Counter-Strike Global Offensive and we we're actually following each other's career for, for quite some time until, of course, he went all the way to the moon, became one of the best players of all time in Counter-Strike and I guess I ended up as a decent Counter-Strike player and now a decent content creator slash analyst within Counter-Strike. So I hope you guys are gonna like these new videos where you can learn a lot about the players, you get to hear some unknown facts, you get to hear some fun facts and you get to learn about the player's journey to where they are today, what they've achieved, how they got there and what you can expect for them in the future. Now the cool thing about Device of course is that we don't know what the future is gonna be for Device but if you want to hear my take on it make sure to watch the entirety of this video. Enjoy, boys. Hey guys, Skin Baron is my preferred place to buy and sell my skins for three main reasons right here. They're 30% cheaper than the Steam market, it's a safe environment, and I can get the money straight into my bank account when I sell skins through Skin Baron. As said, safe environment, so if you're dealing with skins, if you wanna purchase, sell anything, check out Skin Baron. The link is in below in the description. I'd appreciate it. I probably could skip this part of the video where I introduce you guys to device talk about who he is, where he's from, how old he is, because I'm pretty sure you already know Device, one of the most winning Counter-Strike players of all time. But I may as well do the little introduction just so everyone, maybe new Counter-Strike viewers as well, is aware of what Device or oh, I guess who Device is, what kind of capacity he is as a Counter-Strike player. He's a 26-year-old Dane, has played Counter-Strike Global Offensive more or less ever since it came out. Before that, he was playing Counter-Strike Source and as said, one of the most winning Counter-Strike players of all time. He was part of the golden era in Astralis, the team that won three majors in a row, back to back to back to back major winners. And he also won a fourth with the very same organization. Device is a player that has achieved it all. He have also won the Instant Grand Slam, which was this big tournament where depending on how many tournaments you were able to win in a row, you could claim the prize of $1 million. It's only been won twice ever by Liquid and by Astralis absolutely insane he's won that there's nothing nothing in this world i'd say the device hasn't won as a counter-strike player as an individual he's always been up there with the very very best you know he's placed second third fourth fifth on the top 20 players of the year device has never been the best player in the world there's always been a simple then sai Wu came then there was another player get right for that matter back in the days as well device has never been the best player in the world and that's what's beautiful about his story he is perhaps the best teammate of all time he is arguably the most winning counter-strike player of all time but as an individual player he's never gotten the Ballon d'Or winning counter-strike he's never been recognized as the best individual and rightfully so device is not the best counter-strike player individually speaking Sai Wu's better simple is better you argue that Nico Nico with the consistency he's shown the last couple of years also down the line is a better and more skillful individual but I'd argue that Device is the best teammate and the best and maybe most complete Counter-Strike player of all time. Otherwise, you wouldn't win everything he's won by being a, a catalyst in Astralis as well. Obviously, that was all about the team, but Device was the star within Astralis. If you had to point at one guy who could bow them out of a rough scenario, who could take over the game on the server, Device would be the guy who did it the most often. So, take nothing away from him. You know, being a top 2, top 3, top 4 player in the world in a game where more than 10 million people are playing on a monthly basis, pretty goddamn sick by device so if you don't know his name by now if you don't have an idea of what capacity device is i'm sorry the rest of the video is is not going to be fun for you but if you already are aware of who device is let's move on to the next part where i talk about his story and how he became the capacity he is within our industry device started playing counter-strike back in counter-strike source me and Device actually grew up in the same scene. We're around the same age. I'm 27, he's 26. So I've known the guy for a very, very long time. He was a monster in Counter-Strike Source. He was a young talent. He was a guy that had a natural flair for the game. So it was only natural that he would bring that skill set over to Counter-Strike Global Offensive when that came out. Now, part of that story is that back then, he was not the most serious Counter-Strike player. When you're 14, 15 years of age and you're playing Counter-Strike Source, there's not a lot of money involved in it. You're you were one of the best players, you were on the best team, but again, you couldn't really make a living of it. Device 
prioritized differently, I'd say. He was very good at badminton, he had other sports, he was a, a likable, sociable guy as well, so he was prioritizing other parts of his life than just Counter-Strike back then. So he kind of had a repetition for not being the most serious player, but he made up for that in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, no doubt about it. As said, he took his skill set from Counter-Strike Source, brought it over to CSGO, and almost instantaneously, he was one of the best players in the game. I would argue the first six months to 12 months, the team I was on, Western Wolves, and, and some of the players I was playing with, Nico, uh, an old Danish AWP player, were better than Device. I never played with him either. We were the second best, third best team in the world. We had some great results the first couple of years in Counter-Strike uh, Global Offensive, but it was like Device was always like the best player outside of, of that team I was on. He was always the, the guy on the second best team in, in Denmark at the time being who would be just owning it up and it was only a question of time before he would be on the best team and if not he would make his own team the best team because he was so much better than everyone else eventually device ended up joining copenhagen wolves uh, the best danish team at the moment uh, instead of me actually uh, i was replaced with device they wanted the, uh, an awp player they wanted a guy who could bring a little more firepower so nico and, and device came into the team and that was the interesting thing about it nico back then was a primary awp and device was the secondary op he was a rifler for the vast majority of the time and he was good with it when nico the danish nico kind of yeah, he, he lost it. He lost his skill set, lost his motivation. Device took over that role. We needed a new primary Danish AWP player, and Device was good enough to do it, and the rest is history, right? As I spoke about before, one of the most consistent players of all time, without a doubt, the best AWP player in terms of consistency of all time, and a guy who could dictate the game. A lot of players also recognize Device as the smartest AWP player. A lot of the more, I guess, explosive, aggressive offers, they always said that, I look at the way Device play. If I I want to make the correct decision, if I want to position myself correctly, if I want to get better at my game and I want to be a little bit more consistent in the way I play, I look at it how Device is playing because he was very, very good at exactly that. Bringing consistency to his team and being a consistent factor in the world and within Astralis that made them win all these titles, that made them win all the majors. Device had a great story in, in, in Source, as I said, brought the skill over to CSGO, and that whole repetition of him being, you know, not the most serious guy, kind of went away in CSGO. Hardworking, a reliable teammate. As said, I had the honor of, of playing with him a couple of times as well. I was the Danish national captain for, for Team Denmark back when we played European Championship. I, of course, selected Device as one of my players together with Dupree, Siblings, and a guy called Lummi. We ended up winning the European Championship against France in a final, and of course, Device was the best player on the server as well, and you could just instantly feel that when he he was on the team you had a, a known quantity he would always show up he would always get his frags he was very good at communicating he was calm he was a great teammate honestly speaking a lot of people may think that if you are that good you also have a massive ego and sure some players will will have a bit of an ego and i'm sure device in, in certain areas and in certain you know situations or in certain rounds or certain periods of his life have had an ego but overall I mean, I was a far less good teammate than he was, you know, he was better at communicating, I felt he was keeping it more calm, he wasn't as sad, mad, frustrated when things didn't went his way, at least that's what I sensed, so I also looked up to Device, thought to myself that, okay, if I, I replicate some of his, you know, personality, or if I, I take inspiration for what he's doing, I could become a much, much better player as well. Device was without a doubt one of the greatest players to come out of Denmark and he was a source of inspiration not only for upcoming pros or amateurs but also for some of us who were competing alongside Device. As said, I played in teams that were better than Device were playing in in the first year in CSGO but I had no doubt it was only a question of time before he would come in and he would start dominating Danish Counter-Strike if he truly decided to do so, which he did. That whole, you know, repetition of having an attitude of, of not being serious no, uh, enough about Counter-Strike, it completely went away. When he figured out that there was a money, there was career to happen in Counter-Strike, he put badminton aside, maybe an injury played in as well. I'm not actually not quite certain if, if that has anything to do with it. But Device became this ultra, ultra serious and modern days Counter-Strike player that could dominate games and, as it ended up winning four majors in total, three in a row, and became a player that has won more than two million prize money. It, it, just imagine two million dollars in prize money. That is without salary. That is without sticker money. That is without any sponsorships or any appearance fees. You know, this is just a wild number I'm gonna gonna put out there. I am 100% sure that Device has made more than five million dollars playing Counter Strike. Probably more than that as well. When you combine all the sticker money, all the salary, that is a guy who made a career out of a game that back then didn't have a path. Right? We were not getting paid anything to play. My first salary was 300 euros and I was playing 80 hours a week. Device, 
He took it to the next level, he made a career for himself, and he became one of the, I guess, one of the goats of Counter-Strike Global Offense. Not only in Denmark, but he's hardly recognized anywhere in the world, I'd say, as not being one of the best of all time. What a career he's had. That begs the question, where is Device today? We're talking about how he was one of the best players of all time, how he's won everything. We haven't talked about his move from Astralis to NIP. That was one of the first things that kind of broke the Danish era of Astralis, right? Device making the move from Astralis to NIP. He publicly said that he wanted to show himself, show the rest of the world, that he could achieve success elsewhere than Astralis. That his performances and Astralis wasn't all about the team, but that was something he hopefully could replicate in NIP. Got off to a good start in NIP. They ended up qualifying for the major with NIP. They got into the playoff. They finished 5th to 8th at the very first major he played for them in Stockholm. But it was clear to see that Device wasn't feeling comfortable. The body language of Device was changed. The way he was playing on the server was changed. He wasn't performing as well as he was in the beginning of NIP. And something seemed a little bit off with Device. And that's when it hit us. Device took a break. Went on a sick leave. Had some, some mental struggles, I'd say. Again, I want to be a little bit careful with how we word this uh, in, in respect of his private life and in respect of the situation he's dealing with. I know he's had some stomach issues as well. Mentally, he was going through a rough path and Device, as said, took a break from NIP. And ever since, we haven't seen Device play an official game of Counter-Strike. He hasn't played for NIP since. He hasn't played for Astralis. He hasn't played for anyone. He's playing Face It a little bit. But Device took a break and we have not seen one of the greatest of all time play ever since. And bear in mind, as I said earlier, he's only 26 years of age. He should have, you know, a couple of good years, maybe even four or five left in the tank. Question is, can Device get back? And if so, where could he end up joining? Let's explore that a little bit further. So let's get into the nitty gritty. I know this is the most interesting part of the video for many of you guys. Where is Device and is he coming back? Daily, I'm being asked, do you know what's going on with the device? Do you know if he's coming back? Do you know what he's doing? And roughly, I don't, I don't. As I said, I wanna respect his private life. I really wanna respect the situation he's in, but I'm gonna try to put the two things aside. As a Counter-Strike fan, as an analyst, and as a guy who's been involved in Counter-Strike for the vast majority of my life, I would love to see device come back, but only on the condition that he's feeling motivated, that he wants to come back, that he's feeling okay to do so. Otherwise, I would like device to find happiness elsewhere in his life whether he's picking up another sport, whether he's retiring, getting into another job, whatever. I just wish for Device to have a good time because let's be honest, we don't want him back if he's not motivated. We don't want him back if he's not uh, mentally uh, able to deal with the pressure. Uh, it is to, to be a Counter-Strike player. It is insanely, insanely rough to deal with all the comments, all the pressure, all the expectations, all the death threats for that matter as well. I'm getting them daily myself. So let's be honest, it, it requires a certain amount of mental strength to be there. Now, what is Device doing right now? Nobody knows. It's been rumored that he is uh, coming back potentially. He's been talking to uh, to teams. NIP has also said, you know, publicly, or at least it's been rumored that they're willing to sell him. Uh, a rough fee of six hundred thousand dollars is being reported. That's what you have to pay if you want device to join the team. I'd assume that's that's going to be slightly less, you know, uh, or significantly lower once they realize that they can't really acquire that much money for a player who hasn't played an official game for almost a year. But still, you know, that's the first thing we heard in a long time. The device is actively perhaps exploring getting back to the scene. Now, right now, there's a severe lack of Danish AWP players. Going back to Astralis would be obvious, right? If Astralis could buy back Device from NIP, they sold him for $1 million, at least reportedly. If they could buy him back for 600 k sounds like a good deal, but it's very expensive. And do you really want to bank your future on a guy who's been out with mental issues and that is 26 years of age? Maybe not, but if you're Astralis, you need it because you are in deep, deep trouble with the current AWP situation within your team. Farley currently is playing for Astralis. He's not good enough, simple as it is. So if you could bring back Device, I also think you can bring back Astralis to a level that is going to be very attractive for them as a future. Question is, do they have the money for it or do they have the desire for it? And do Device even want to come back to Astralis or does he want to go international, right? There's so many questions. There's a lot of teams out there I could see Device fit into, but I also do think that something you as a fan has to remember is that Device 
Rice at all times has been one of the best players in the world and at all times he's been competing for trophies. For Device, it makes no sense to join a team that is top 20 or top 15 in the world. It makes no sense for Device to play his heart out to get out of a group stage or play his heart out to qualify for a tournament by playing all these online open qualifiers. Device is a player that respectively have, uh, I guess, uh, an understanding of his own level that he needs to be where you can win trophies. So you're kind of limited in teams he can join. G2, got Monesi, that's the future. NIP, it's a no-go. He's never going to play for NIP again. Astralis, we already covered. That would make sense. Navi, a no-go, obviously, with Simple and the communication and the language barrier. Saivu and Vitality, that's a no-go to join his old teammates in, in Magix and Dupree. So it, it can be tough for Device to find a, a fitting team. I hope he will come back. It's been rumored that he's working out, going to the gym, going out... Uh, having a, a life, I guess, going out to the nightlife in, in Copenhagen as well. So Device is alive, that much we can conclude. Whether or not he's coming back to play Counter-Strike, I don't know for certain, but I'll, I'll leave you with this. If Device is not back playing on an active team within the next two to three months, or at the very least after the next major, after the next major in Rio, I don't think Device will come back to the level that I would love him to be back at. You can be out for a, a year. You can be out for a year and a half and you can come back if you're as skilled as Device. But your value and, and the risk people are willing to take on you will go down dramatically the longer you wait. So if I'm Device, I hope that you're mentally ready for it. I hope that you're suited for it. And I wouldn't mind if you join a team that is top eight, top seven, top nine, you know, that's okay. That's respectable. Grind your way back up. Maybe make the move to Astralis. Who knows? But get back into playing ways because Astralis could use you. There's a lot of teams out there that could use you. But at the very least, I can say this as a Danish Counter-Strike fan, as a Dane myself, Danish Counter-Strike needs Device. We don't have any AWP players remotely close to his level, so it would be great if you'd come back. For me and everyone else in Denmark, please do it. But as I said, make sure that you are mentally fit for it as well. Make sure that you want to, make sure that you're motivated. Otherwise, I hope that you're finding your happiness elsewhere in life. That is, without a doubt, the most important thing. Having a player on your team that is not motivated, that doesn't really want to do the job, is not going to be a good thing for either you or for the team itself. I'm sure Device is already aware. I'm sure he's very, very much on top of the situation. I'm sure we're just speculating, but I felt this video was, was needed to be done because I feel like the story of Device is very fascinating. One of the greatest players of all time in Counter-Strike, one of the most natural skilled players of all time in Counter-Strike, which is also one of the reasons why I think that personally, if he comes back, he will be owning it up again. Some players, they need to play Counter-Strike 100 hours every single week in order to stay relevant. Device was never like that. He could play a little less than everyone else because he was a little more talented, a little more skilled than everyone else. So trust in Device, trust in him coming back. We're crossing our fingers, but that's it. More importantly, let's hope that he's well, let's hope that he's happy, and let's hope that we get to see the device on the server one more time, at the very least.